What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I've got an updated bedroom tour for you for 2021. So if you've been watching my videos for many years, you might remember that this room has always just been plain white, relatively boring, but being a place that I just like sleep and otherwise like don't really care too much about, I didn't really put any effort into actually making it look good aside from investing in some nice furniture from the beginning. So this year I figured I would make some changes, maybe paint this wall like a darker color, add some millwork, and I think it looks really really good but I also added a few different tech improvements as well so in this video we're going to talk about some of the interior design stuff as well as some great bedroom tech including this right here which is a product that I tried to get for many months and it finally arrived and I initially saw it on TikTok and just thought it was super cool. So when I first bought this place I couldn't really afford any nice furniture and for the most part I just had Ikea everywhere but one area that I did invest in was the bedroom and I went ahead and purchased the entire Sandro collection and I can say after four years I still absolutely love it. It has like a nice fabric material on the bed and the walnut and white finish on the nightstands and I just think it has like a very good size but aside from the furniture the area that saw the biggest change this year is definitely in the millwork in this wall right here and as I said, this whole room was completely white, the bedding was white, just like very plain and boring, and I didn't really have any art at all. So I figured after going online and seeing some images, I would love to do like an accent wall that just add like a whole level of contrast to the room, a little bit of dimension in the millwork, and almost make it look more like a hotel, which believe it or not, I actually want because I don't know, I love staying at hotels and being a job that usually has to travel a lot, um, I kind of got used to that. So the way I'd kind of describe the millwork that I went with is kind of like a transition between classic and modern. Usually I would never pick a wainscoting pattern like this, but I figured after seeing some images, this looks really, really good. And the color that I went with after testing four to five different paint options, including like a very soft olive green, a couple blues, and also a gray, was a color called Hail Navy. And in the daytime, it has like a nice level of blue to it, whereas at night, it is really like a dark gray with a bit of a blue hint, which I think just looks so perfect. And I was definitely worried in the beginning, but after all this kind of came together in a couple days, I think it looks absolutely incredible. And paired up with the West Elm lamp that I have in the gold finish, I think the gold and the blue is like a new color combination that I'm going to be using a lot more. I also decided to go ahead and add a rug. And even though this is not like the largest room, it's about a 10 by 11 foot size. Um, I decided to add a rug that was about six by eight and even though it doesn't cover like the entire under the bed I figured having it actually just take up like a good medium of space right here at least separates the room a little bit more and adds just like another bit of accent and I picked this up on Wayfair it was like maybe 150 bucks which is a great deal I just didn't want to spend like thousand dollars on something that was gonna go under the bed anyways so yeah on the design side of things that is what I changed and I think it looks really really good so the first product is one that I'm so excited to show you because I originally saw it on TikTok and it went extremely viral. I think it had like millions of likes and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it as well, but it is the Jorizal Barissier. And this is actually a coffee machine and alarm clock that is built into one. And as soon as I saw that as someone who is into tech and home, I felt like it was just like the perfect tangent. It comes in a black and white finish and I spent months trying to track it down because it was just so popular after the TikTok video. And the way that you can set it is that once you have it prepped and everything the night before, once your alarm goes off, it will start making the coffee and it starts from the water boiler right there. And after a couple minutes, it will siphon the water through this glass pipe and it almost like showers into like the pour over setup where it has a stainless steel mesh filter and you have your coffee grounds in there. You also have like a little storage bin right here for some the um, ground up beans as well and also a scoop so every single thing that you need to make the coffee is just contained in this unit right here that is super stylish and it actually has like a refrigerated storage for your milk so you can actually just have everything prepped right here it will keep it cool and in the morning as soon as your alarm clock goes off it will just like siphon over make your coffee it is super satisfying and you can wake up to like a very nice smell and just drink your coffee right away so even though it is like a little bit of an odd product i think for anyone who loves coffee this is just something that once you see it you just gotta have it 
One of the most important areas of tech though is your bed. And believe it or not, there's actually quite a bit of tech behind it in terms of making sure you have the bed that suits your sleeping style and also your preferences. And Helix is the best company for that and a huge thanks to them for sponsoring the channel once again. So if you guys didn't know, I've mentioned it many times before, I've had a Helix bed since 2017 and I absolutely love it. And the reason why is because they have a sleep quiz which allows you to fill up all of your preferences, your sleeping position, your height, and weight and all that kind of stuff and from there it also asks about like your firmness preferences as well and it recommends a mattress from their lineup specifically to what you filled out in the quiz. So in my case because I am like a side and back sleeper and I like a medium firmness the midnight option was the one that was recommended for me and from there you also have two different options whether it is the standard model or also the luxe model and the luxe model is one that has additional padding and it's the high end in their lineup and it's a mattress that I actually have right here and I absolutely love it and the best part about it is that they actually have a 100 night sleep guarantee so if you go ahead and fill out that quiz get your customized mattress and it may not be the right one for you they'll let you return it with no questions asked and even pick it up from your place for free Every mattress also comes with two free pillows and I gotta say the reason why I like them is that they stay very cool but they also stay very plush as well because there's nothing worse than a pillow just gets like absolutely flattened and stays that way. So these are like great accessories and they also sell like sheets and everything as well as a cooling pad which I have on my bed just to ensure that you stay nice and cool at night and don't wake up all sweaty. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself and get the two free pillows with any mattress purchase and up to $200 off on top of that, just go ahead and check that link on screen in the top of the description section below. So another great piece of tech that doesn't apply to the bedroom alone, but the entire house, is Dyson's new V15 Detect Vacuum. It's their brand new model for 2021, and not only is it a great product, it actually made me TikTok famous for one video because I usually don't get any views on my TikToks, but this got over 600,000 and another 200,000 on Instagram. So people are definitely very curious about how the laser is able to work. And essentially it is part of the attachment here. You can turn it on or off and the laser is put at a specific angle that is able to expose dust that in some cases, even in daylight is hard to see. And like the little corners and everything are where I found it to be very useful. But on top of that, it is a vacuum that has a 60 minute runtime. You can also replace the battery. So if you have a spare one, you don't have to wait for it to completely charge each time, which is a great feature. And it also has a dust particle sensor that is able to adjust the actual like suction power accordingly, depending on the size of the elements that are being kind of sucked in. Beyond just giving you the size of the dust particles, it also lets you know the battery life depending on the different modes and you can adjust it accordingly between like the standard, the max and the eco mode. So definitely a great product for anyone who's in a home or especially in a condo because it is relatively portable and actually makes cleaning very fun, especially with the addition of the laser. So another small design piece or what you could almost consider tech as well that I added to my bedroom is this gantry geolite right here. And the color that I got it in is the ammunition and it actually comes in six total colors and they all look really, really good. I think like the sand, like white or chalk one looks really nice as well. But for this room, this really does fit in with the paint color that I went with, which is Hale Navy very nicely. And it's just like a retro, but also like futuristic, clean looking Italian inspired light. And it's actually 3D printed as well, which I thought was super cool. They have a ton of different great lights on their website that I really want to feature in more spaces because the design is just really unique and I feel like I see these types of designs in like interior design renderings all the time but it's cool to find a company that actually makes these products that are a little bit more like unique than the traditional lights that you usually see. What is also great about it though is that the light quality is excellent. Inside you have a 550 lumen bulb that has a 90 plus CRI rating and for those who don't know what that is it's the color rendition and also also just like the overall light quality so you guys are seeing me filming this right now it doesn't flicker or anything and with all the lights that I have in all my renovations I ensure that they are over 90 CRI it is like the perfect bedroom light because it just has like such a soft glow to it and there's also a built-in dimmer the cord is also nice and long so you can plug it in very easily and they have a whole range of lights whether it is like a table lamp that you can put on your desk or nightstand floor lamps for your bedroom and also wall lights as well that you can actually have like installed and and the wire and everything just plugs in, but it's all like part of the design. And if you go ahead and browse the site, I'm sure you're gonna find something that you like because I just feel like this fits into the overall theme so well. 
Another like cool tech product that you could also add to your bedroom is an Aromatech. And this is actually a scent diffuser that looks very high end, comes in many different colors. And it's one that I saw around quite often before finally getting one for myself. And I've got to say, it looks super cool and it also works very well. Instead of using like a traditional method of heat to work as a diffuser, it actually uses filter air instead, which is a lot cleaner. So in terms of actually changing the scent out, you just go ahead and push this down, unscrew the bottle and attach the scent to it and they have a whole collection of scents and the ones that I personally like the most are Santel and also the hotel because as I mentioned in the video I love hotels and part of what the hotel experience is is that a lot of them do have like a very specific scent and if you guys saw my home tech video I actually have the scent machine that the addition hotel uses and it's one that I really like to have around the house so this diffuser right here is able to serve about a hundred to a thousand square foot depending on the intensity settings and you can actually control that right Right here with like the touch capacitive but you could also control it from your phone via Bluetooth as well. It is definitely a bit of an expensive product I've got to admit but they do have a non Bluetooth model so if you don't need the phone control then you can save a little bit of money but you do have to buy the scent separately and I think like in any home if you find a scent that you like then this is a product that is very stylish and effective. Another product that I also use in the bedroom quite often is the Hopless Cool Formaldehyde Fan. This is their new model as well, and it has the same great features of heating and cooling as a typical fan in the previous generations. And in my case, I do have air conditioning and like a heating system, but it's actually broken twice in the past couple years. And each time it costs thousands and thousands of dollars to fix and the parts took like months to arrive. So through the entire like winter months um, living in Canada, it was generally quite cold. So having something like this at night is really, really useful. And I'm able to set it to actually the night setting where it doesn't make too much noise and it rotates around. And I can also set a timer as well to have it shut off automatically after like say four hours. In the summer, we also use these in the office to keep it nice and cool in the spaces that we're filming because all the lights and cameras definitely do generate a ton of heat. And the air conditioning is very, very back ordered. I think we're gonna have to wait at least a few months because everybody's trying to get it at the same time. So this right here is just like a nice portable option that you could put in in any part of the house and this year's model also has a formaldehyde sensor which is like a toxic gas that is completely invisible and with the HEPA filter that is built in it ensures you have the best air quality at all times. It also looks quite good and fits in with the theme of this bedroom and the office very very well. So on the TV side of things, nothing's really changed here. I did make some upgrades in the past year or so and didn't really feel like anything had to be updated. And if I was to do anything, I would say I would maybe change the TV to like a frame TV, but it really isn't needed. The way that my bedroom is laid out is that there is a bit of like an inset like ridge. So the TV looks really flush against the wall. And this is actually a QLED model from a few years ago. So it has the one connect box that is completely external for like plugging in the TV, the TV TV box or like the game console. Honestly, I don't really spend much time watching movies or TV shows as much as I would like to, but Formula One is like six in the morning over here in the west coast of Canada. So being able to turn it on, watch the start of the race, fall asleep and watch the end of the race, it's just really nice because I don't think anybody really wants to get up at 6 a.m. on Sunday, even if it's for Formula One. Um, below that, I have a speaker setup, which is the Sonos Arc, and that just sounds amazing. Especially for a room of this size, it is very immersive. It uses HDMI eARC and it also comes with an adapter if you're planning to use optical. And this right here with the white one just blends right into the wall. And even though it does stick out a little bit, I think for the sound quality and the overall design, it is still definitely something that I can recommend and one of my favorite additions. It is actually also my alarm clock, which plays music as soon as that goes off each morning. The way that I have it mounted is actually with the wall mount that Sono sells for that specific model. So it looks completely seamless. In terms of TVs, though, even though we have reviewed like very high-end models, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you don't really have to have the nicest one. Just go ahead and buy the previous year model or like even years prior because as long as it's 4K, it has the support for the content that you're watching. If you're like plugging in a TV or satellite box, it isn't really gonna make a big difference because chances are the amount of money that you spend on a TV in its current year is gonna be worth half in a year anyways. And most likely, or for a lot of people out there, the content that you're watching on it doesn't even support half of the features that the new TV that you paid a ton of money for has. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what is in my closet. And if you've been watching my videos for the past few years, you might notice that my closet is really boring to the point where it's like just monochromatic stuff. It's super predictable. And if it isn't like the Tommy Hilfiger Vediments hoodie, then it's like a Dangerfield black one and recently also the Represent one. And the reason why is Honestly, I kind of gotten over buying the whole clothes thing and I got rid of all like the designer pieces that I had before. Some of them I lost quite a bit of money on, some of them I got my money back on, but generally speaking, I've just switched over to like a very neutral, comfortable, like tailored pants with like a neutral colored hoodie, um, spent the money on watches instead and just wear like the same pair of shoes. I don't really know what it is, but I've definitely simplified it, but that doesn't mean I have lost my interest in clothing or anything. It's just kind of adapted over, I would say. So starting out in the closet, I have like some of the, the ones that are black. There's also the white and gray stuff. I don't really wear any colors at all, to be honest, and I don't really plan to change that anytime soon, but the one that you probably see me wear the most is from the clothing brand that I co-own, the Dangerfield hoodie that has the embroidered logo on the front here that we sold quite a few hundred of online that a lot of you guys went ahead and picked up. There's gonna be other colors that are coming very soon, including the gray one right here in the black text, which a lot of you guys have asked about. So this is kind of what I wear for the most part. It is relatively comfortable. I've worn these for almost like two years in this case now. It's held up pretty well. It also has like my custom cut and stick stitch style with like where I like the um, kind of distances of the armholes, the length of the sleeve, and also the fact that there isn't any drawstring or anything. So if you guys wanna go ahead and sign up for the newsletter, I'm gonna leave a link down below because the new ones are actually coming in just a couple days and I think we have a forest green one as well. Another brand that I've also been wearing a lot lately is Represent. And the reason why is because they have tons of designs. They have a nice drop schedule. I also find the quality quite nice. It has like a bit of a baggy feel to it. And this is just like the standard owner's collection. It also comes in many different colors, including like a blue and like a green, but I have all the ones in black in both the hoodie and the crew neck option. So I'm wearing one right here. It also has like the design on the back. Um, it also has like a bit of a button set up over here on the front. And and I like some of the design details that they have on the pockets as well. Um, but some of the other pieces that I also grabbed from Represent include this other owner's club piece. Uh, it is fully embroidered on the back, as you can see here. And another one of my favorites is also the other piece from the recent owner's collection with the badge. And that is just on the front. As you can see, it's just like a very minimal piece that goes with pretty much everything that I wear. And I also have some of their t-shirts as well, including um, this shark one right here that also comes in a hoodie, kind of like a vintage wash. And I also recently picked up one right here, which is from the owner's club. And it is just like a cream colored one, really simple with the print on the back. So the reason why I like it is that they just have like quite a few drops. And I also like the quality, the fit. I found a size that fits and it does seem relatively universal. And if you guys have been asking like what pants I've been wearing, especially lately, these are also from Represent as well. Um, this is the 24-7 collection and essentially what this means is that it's a type of knit or material that is very flexible and relatively thin as well. So whether you're doing like athletic stuff or just like wearing it day to day, if I'm like running around, which happens quite often um, for work, then this is just like a comfortable pair of pants that has like a nice zipper on the side. So it's like a hybrid cargo that also has a drawstring on the bottom that you can tighten up. And I also just had them custom tailored in length. It just looks super classy in my opinion, even though it's an outfit that is really nothing special. Some of the other shorts that I also have from Represent include the 24-7, which is pretty much the same as a pant that I'm wearing right now, but it's in the shorts option. And I wear these for like workouts, going outside to play pickleball or whatever it is. In the summertime, it is just a, once again, very thin one that looks really minimal and goes well. I don't really know what else to say about it. It's like just a pretty simple one with a drawstring. Um, this here is the nylon one. So it's a little bit of a thicker material and it has a different type of drawstring, still has the zippers on the side, but I think this one also looks pretty good. And especially in the summer, I've just been wearing a lot of shorts with crew necks and hoodies. I know I used to wear these like nylon published pants a lot, but honestly, after I found like the Lululemons and also the Represent options, I've kind of retired them because these are just not as comfortable. They are thin and they do like sit quite light, but they just like don't really have much give in terms of the flexibility of them. So yeah, these are kind of retired, but they're still like a pretty decent option. 
I know these are a bit of a splurge, but these root pants right here come in a few different colors. I've seen them in like red, black, gray, and all that. So I decided because I have nothing that is green in my wardrobe, I figured I would get these in the green one. It just has like the Rude logo. I would say quality is quite good. Um, there is also a nice zipper that is a little bit heavy actually in its holder. And the string is also very long in the yellow color. So from a design standpoint, I think I really like them, but whether they're worth the money, I think that would be up to you. And if I had to do it over again, I probably wouldn't have bought one of these two because I just find that they're not as comfortable as something like the 24 seven that I just showed you. Usually I'm like a medium for like a hoodie or a t-shirt, but yeah, this right here is in a size extra small and it still does fit a little bit oversized. I do find like the neck cutout is quite large and the arms do fit quite baggy. So if I'm just like going out and looking for like a casual shirt, then I really do like the Rude Tees. Um, I do also have it in a few different other colors right here, the same one in blue. I would say of the two, I do like the yellow one a lot more, but I don't think the yellow one was out when I got the blue one. Um, but yeah, these are the exact same. And I think the trend here is that once I find something that I like, I just buy like as many color options of the exact same thing because it's just a lot easier that way. And this over here is the Motorsport one. Um, it says like the Monaco Grand Prix. I really love Rude's collaboration with McLaren. I know their first drop had some good stuff. I wasn't really a big fan of the rest of it, but I think overall, in terms of the clothing company that I think is doing like the best work at the moment and like the collabs and everything, it's gotta be between Rude and Kith. But personally, I've really been going with Rude lately and I'm probably gonna try to pick up more of like the crewnecks and the hoodies because you only need so many black t-shirts. And to be honest, a lot of these don't really get rotated because I live in Canada and even now I'm wearing like crew necks and hoodies all the time, but these will probably be like worn for many years to come. Um, but yeah, this is just all from Rude and whether it's worth the price, you are definitely paying a premium for the brand, but I wouldn't say they're like outrageously priced. This right here is like a really nice one to wear in the house. I picked it up from a vintage store for like 40 bucks and it's just one where like if you're editing or something, it's got like this fur kind of finish to it and you really can't go wrong with it. I think it's like a great pickup and just some of the things that make like thrifting or going to like a vintage store very exciting on top of finding stuff like this. You guys might've seen me wear this in a few videos. I also wore it to Japan and it is one that I picked up for about $10. And for example, if we're doing like a video with Sony or something, we're not allowed to wear any additional branding so the only shirt you're really allowed to wear is one that has the company's logo on it so we've done a few partnerships with sony for example and this was like the perfect jacket for those campaigns and it's just like a thin windbreaker that fits very nicely so anybody who's watched the channel for a while knows I wear these all the time and I feel like the reason for it is because they are very noticeable. So whenever you see me wear like a Tommy logo or whatever, um, it's just like so obvious it's attributed to a brand and people just like feel like they've seen the same shirt a hundred times. But if I wear like a black hoodie for every video, nobody really says anything. But yeah, I keep these still. I honestly don't wear them as much after I picked up a few new pieces, but I just like the way they fit. They're kind of squared. They don't have a pocket or anything, but they are extremely baggy. And these are both actually women's sizes and I still had to get them alterated. They're just that baggy. Um, I picked it up in the red, which I like a lot. I think a lot of videos that does make sense. And the gray one is just like an easy one. So whenever I feel like a video set has like not enough color to it, then I'll throw one of these on and it definitely fixes that problem. For like white tees and stuff, I do have a few pieces from Stone Island, really nothing special at all. I just keep it super simple. Um, just like, I don't know, grab whatever is like, just like a white with a small logo on it. I don't have any other jackets, pants, and all that kind of stuff. I did used to have some of the pants, but I just wasn't a huge fan of like the quality. They seemed to fade very easily. They were too baggy. Just didn't really go with what I was looking for in like an everyday essential. But I do have like a few white ones. So yeah, in the summer, I just wear like a white tee, a black tee, rotate between them, maybe throw a Dangerfield on, a um, couple hoodies and that's pretty much what I roll with for the entire year. So when it comes to the shoe collection, you probably notice that I wear the same pair of shoes in all my photos. And I've just been sticking to CPs for the past couple. Um, I do have a few pairs of those. So this right here is the kind of b-ball low and I don't really see them around that often, but it is like a nice construction to it. Um, it has like a nice midsole, the leather and everything. You can see that these are absolutely beat up because I've had them for a couple years now. But generally speaking, I just like to go with like a white sneaker or like a leather shoe with the entire black outfit. And I actually think it does look pretty good together. 
Um, I do used to wear the uh, Common Project Achilles Lowe's, which is probably like my favorite one overall, but I don't know, they really hurt to break in and I don't know if like European size changed or anything, but I grabbed a size down from my previous pair and these are way too big. I also really like wearing these Y3s. They're just super comfortable. They've got a nice prime knit material to them and the boost foam on the bottom. And when you wear them, you feel like you're just like bouncing around a little bit. Um, and yeah, they do fit quite loosely with any like Y3 type of shoe. But generally speaking, um, I think like if I'm not wearing the CPs and looking for a pair that's a little bit more athletic, then I'll throw these on. As for the Jordan 1s, I probably wear these the least just because I don't find them that comfortable, um, but I've kept them because they are a good investment based on the price that I paid for them quite a few years ago. But this is the Jordan 1 Chicago and it's pretty self-explanatory. It was part of the Virgil Abloh, um, like the 10 collection. I also have a few other pieces in the Jordan 1 side, including the Europe pair and also the UNC ones, which we got from StockX when we work with them. But Honestly, I'm kind of just sitting on these because I feel like they're grails and it doesn't really hurt to hold on them in the long term. I might wear them like a couple times a year, but generally speaking, I'm just not the biggest fan of wearing Jordan 1s. They just feel a little bit heavy. Um, and another pair that I got a little bit more recently, but it's also been a couple years already, is uh, this right here, which is the Travis Scott Jordan 1s. I think of all the Jordan 1s that I have, this one is probably the most comfortable. It fits a lot more like a standard Jordan 1. Um, but yeah, it's got like some details to it of the logo being backwards, the cactus jack on the back. And I think this is a pair that goes with what I wear quite a bit. Um, the brown and black and white, you just really can't go wrong with that. The red and black white also goes pretty well, but I don't usually like wearing the Europe uh, Jordan 1s just because the white just sticks out a lot and they're not like the smallest shoe and I'm also not the tallest person. So to wrap up on the watch side of things, the two that I still hold at the moment are the Rolex Daytona Panda, which is probably like my favorite one that I plan to hold for a very long time. And it's been the best investment so far. I believe I paid like just about $30,000 for it. And right now I'm seeing prices go up to about 50. And when I got it, it was brand new and I did pay aftermarket price. But even then it's shown that watches are a really good investment compared to shoes. So this is what I wear. It's very comfortable. It is relatively thin and it's a lot smaller than it actually looks in the photos and the other watch that I also have is the Rolex Submariner Hulk or the green one and that one is pretty standard I mean you see those a lot more often and I got it for a pretty good price it has gone up in value but not as much as the Daytona and I think for any like day where I may be like filming a little bit more a little bit more action in general then I'll switch over to the Submariner just to protect the Panda a little bit more but I think the next watch that I really really want to get is to hop back into AP and get like an AP diver, but I have heard that is quite a chunky watch. I used to have the 15 3900 ST and that was like a 39 millimeter stainless one. It looked really, really good in the sun. It just had like all these nice dimensions and I think AP will always be my favorite watch, but for like the lifestyle of like walking around and just like doing like the day-to-day -day stuff, the link just kept breaking. And after it broke like three times, I decided to sell it off at a profit and get the Daytona. But I have heard AP has started to go up in value as well, especially in the last year or two. So maybe I should have held on that one. But I think with any watch, if that's something that you like, it's a good way to like dress up an outfit that is relatively simple. And it's also a pretty good investment for any like kids who have spent tons of money on shoes over the years and are kind of trying to look for a new tangent. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video of my updated bedroom tour for 2021. And I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with the changes. This is definitely a room that I didn't care much about for many years. I was just like redoing the kitchen, the floors and everything else, as well as the main office or like the home office that has become in the past year or so. And I'm pretty happy with like every little area, but I feel like the one space that was kind of neglected was the bedroom. And after making some changes and relatively simple ones that a lot of people can actually DIY if you have the time to or actually know how to, then it's actually a very economical way to upscale any room. But if you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like, and I'll see you all in the next one.